Well, an Australian-made rover is heading to the moon for the first time in the nation's history. The rover will be part of a future NASA mission where it will aim to extract oxygen from the moon's soil. Withdrawing oxygen from lunar soil is critical if humans are ever to establish a long-term future presence on the moon or even Mars. The rover will be a joint effort from Australian businesses and researchers and is supported by 50 million bucks worth of federal funding. Joining us live now is the Minister for Science and Technology, Melissa Price. Uh, Minister, good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. So we're off to the moon. Well, kind of. Not man, but a rover. So when is it going? <laughs> Well, around 2026 is the best guess at the moment, but can I just say good morning? And yes, Australia is going to the moon. Let that sink in. Hopefully all those budding scientists, new scientists, are sitting at home on the couch watching you this morning, uh, Pete, and I'm hoping that we've inspired them. Sure. And what, what is the actual, the actual mission and what is our role in that mission? OK, let me paint a picture. So uh, Australia's rover will catch a ride on, on the uh, rocket to the moon and then it'll be operated um, whereby it will collect the lunar soil, as you said at the start, and then NASA will determine the level of oxygen in the soil um, for, for us then to determine how, how is it that we could actually sustain human life um, on the moon. So... Very exciting, great opportunity for Australian businesses, scientists, entrepreneurs to be involved in, in, in effectively our first mission to the moon. AUKUS has also played a role here, hasn't it, uh, which involves the greater collaboration between the nations, US and Australia. So ultimately, what do you hope this will lead to? Well, this is a first start for us and, and Australia is very keen to develop our own sovereign space industry. Um, as you know, I'm also the Minister for Defence Industry yep. and space is now a, a new domain when you talk about the domains for the ADF. So there's a significant amount of money um, being invested in, in defence space. But this is about the civil space industry and it's very important that Australia is a part of that. Um, so we need to be able to grow our, our space industry, more jobs, as I said at the outset, um, to, for us to inspire uh, the next generation of scientists to be involved mm. in this critical work. And get our men and women into space. Absolutely, absolutely. But this is this is a very good start, very good start. Yeah. Um, for our, I'm calling it Aussie Rover. I've got, I've got a couple of names for it, but let's just start with that. OK, um, you mentioned you, you've got a, a few hats at the moment. I just want to ask you about one of your, your former hats as Environment Minister. Um, and you are, of course, in a strong mining state as well. Just on, on climate, are you on board net zero by 2050? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but but, what I, but ambition's not enough, Pete. It's not enough. You actually need to know what's the roadmap. And, and as you've heard, our Prime, Prime Minister and, of course, Minister Taylor talk that it's got to be technology-driven. And the people in my electorate who are the farmers and the miners um, that are very interested in what does that roadmap look like, um, you know, they're very interested in the detail. Have you settled on, have the Libs settled on a position yet and ready to take it to the Nats? Well, there's, there's a lot of conversations going on, Pete. Uh, you wouldn't expect me to discuss that this no. morning. But do you think, do you think it'll be finalised by next week? Is that, is that what you're thinking? Well, you know, it'll be finalised when it's finalised, you know, as, as soon as possible. Uh, you're expecting the Prime Minister to go to Glasgow? Well, that ultimately, of course, is, is uh, an issue for the Prime Minister to determine. But uh, I myself, I, I've been to a COP meeting back in 2018 as, the, as the, then the Environment Minister. And what I do know is that if the Prime Minister does determine to go to Glasgow, that he will find that Australia is incredibly well regarded um, in, in those circles. Um, people may be surprised to hear that, but indeed um, I had a very positive experience back in 2018. But whether the Prime Minister goes or not, you know, that's ultimately a matter for him. Did you have many conversations back then with Prince Charles at all? Interestingly enough, I, I did meet him, um, Lady Elliot Island. That was back in 2018. I, I had the great pleasure of, of spending time with uh, Prince Charles on Lady Elliot Island. Um, I, I, I can't recall us discussing Australia's uh, attitude to climate and our policies, um, but it was a very, very um, valuable and very uplifting meeting uh, indeed. Yeah. OK. Well, that was the point of the question because he seemed a bit miffed that Australia might not be going to COP26. Um, but anyway, we're out of time. Melissa, appreciate your time this morning. We'll talk to you soon.